A lot of people are looking at the new M1 iPad Pro with the same type of vision of, okay, this is really, really amazing hardware, but it's still running iPadOS. And having an M1 chip in something that's mainly going to be used for, you know, email, YouTube, Twitter, it's kind of overkill. So we're all hoping that we can get some revamped software for the iPad this June. And there's multiple different techniques Apple could use to make the iPad take advantage of its equipped hardware between making iPadOS more Mac OS like or just straight up porting Mac OS onto the iPad which I don't think is likely but I do think it's worth entertaining the pros and cons of let's begin these are essentially the two different methods Apple could take. And personally, I think I would much rather Apple just make iPadOS more capable. I've talked about this in plenty of videos in the past. Like, I just want iPadOS to borrow a lot more macOS features so that you don't have to fundamentally change the look and feel of the iPad, but you can't actually replace a lot of Macs because the iPad will become more and more capable of doing things that it can't right now. There are a few major things preventing people from ditching their Mac in favor of the iPad iPad between wanting multi-scalable windows or terminal commands or Xcode, Final Cut, Logic, a proper file management system, all kinds of little edge cases that the Mac has over the iPad that I think you could potentially leapfrog very quickly if Apple did decide to just say, all right, iPad supports keyboard, it supports trackpad or a Bluetooth mouse or whatever. So if you pair a mouse and a keyboard to the iPad, we will thereby allow it to boot into macOS because now it's rocking some of the same hardware. It's got a Thunderbolt port, it's got a display, it's got the M1 chip with 8 gigs of RAM in it or more, so why not just directly boot macOS onto this thing? I mean, macOS can already variably adjust for the different types of monitors you plug into it. We know that macOS can support a 4x3 display, so essentially the reason I consider macOS on the iPad to be an easy workaround is because the amount of tinkering you would have to do to macOS to make it support the iPad is pretty small compared to the amount of tinkering, which really isn't tinkering, it's more of a fundamental rewrite that you would have to bring to iPadOS to be able to do all of the things that we use our Macs for. So what are some of the drawbacks of allowing just a dual boot method of adding boot camp or activating macOS on the iPad? Well, for one, macOS, despite some of the graphic updates with Big Sur, is still not really optimized for touch, and there's absolutely a bunch of applications that work on the Mac that are probably not going to make a great touch interface, so I imagine if Apple did miraculously decide hey, we're gonna let you put macOS on your iPad, it would probably have to deactivate the touch interface, which would feel weird because you have this whole touch layer added to the iPad. It's meant to be this high refresh rate, you know, interactive screen. So if they just went up and decided, okay, if you're using macOS, the touch screen doesn't work anymore, or similar to using macOS sidecar, you can only use the touch screen when you're using the Apple Pencil. So if you're using a drawing application on macOS, then you can use the touch screen and interact with it. But when you're talking about about just regular old Xcode or terminal or the basic stuff and that type of thing. I would imagine Apple encouraging you to not use the touchscreen by just turning it off entirely. Or if they did let you interact with the touchscreen, it would be kind of clunky to try to resize windows. And the user interface of macOS is clearly not really optimized for that. So that's why I could understand it being a bit of a bizarre solution that a lot of people wouldn't really understand Apple allowing because they want the iPad to just essentially run iPadOS and that's it. You know, the iPad, it's fundamentally not a Mac, so why would we let it run Mac OS? But I saw that very same argument being used as to why the iPad would never get an M1 chip. A lot of people saying, you know, M1, M stands for Mac. They wouldn't bring that to the iPad. Yet here we are. They've brought so many things over to the iPad that for years we thought they never would do. I, for the longest time, they would not bring a trackpad or mouse support to the iPad. And yet that's what they've done. In fact, with iPad Pros, they almost always advertise them now with the Magic Keyboard case, saying, hey, now you can use a cursor. Now you can use a trackpad. So it has all of the necessary hardware to boot up into macOS, and frankly, I think that optimization wouldn't be too complicated because how good macOS is with scaling with external monitors. If you want to be charging the iPad from one side and outputting to a 6K or 4K monitor through that full-speed Thunderbolt port now, macOS can already do that. So just booting it onto the iPad, you wouldn't have to redesign very much, whereas bringing stuff to iPadOS, that's going to take some work because 
use. Whether you want to bring Final Cut Logic and Xcode to the iPad, of course we run into the issue of, well, you can't necessarily require those applications to have a keyboard and mouse input. You're going to want to bring those applications to the iPad and also let them work via touch, because at least how Apple is handling their apps on the App Store currently, they essentially say, you know, keyboard and trackpad can be helpful advantages, but ultimately all of the iPad apps should still work with touch only. And then there's the other argument of Apple doesn't want to release pro apps for the iPad that only work with the M1 version. If they release pro apps onto iPad OS, they're going to want it to work with all the iPads. And sure, the new ones might have 8 gigs of RAM, but there's still some budget iPads and really old iPad minis that are barely rocking enough RAM to support an application that's that power intensive. So in my view, it's almost easier to imagine Apple saying that, okay, only M1 equipped iPads can boot into Mac OS because that is a Mac chip fundamentally. So if you don't have an iPad with the M1 chip, we're not going to let you boot Mac OS onto this thing because that would require us to, you know, completely reconfigure Mac OS to boot off of A14 chips and A12 chips and essentially silicon that was really optimized for the iPad and the iPhone, whereas it's safe to say M1 has been optimized for the Mac, except now it's in an iPad. So as bizarre as it sounds, and I know a lot of people are just going to blanket statement say this is stupid and Apple shouldn't do it because iPad not Mac, therefore no Mac OS necessary. I think this might be the quickest and easiest solution to turn the iPad into something a lot more capable. I could very easily imagine a world where you can boot the iPad into a Mac OS configuration, and we know that Mac OS is already getting pretty good at running iPad apps, so if you boot up an iPad app and you're on Mac OS mode, then the touchscreen starts to work and you can use it for that type of thing. But if someone is just looking for Mac applications, whether it be external webcam support, external monitor support, pro applications or terminal commands, if you just decide, let's bring Mac OS to the iPad, you can leapfrog all of that optimization that you would have to take to iPad OS that in my opinion would be a lot more intensive and likely take Apple a whole lot of retooling because currently iPad OS doesn't dynamically adjust to whatever monitor you plug it into. iPad OS is still about having applications take up the full display. It's not about letting apps run within a window very much and it shares so much in common with iOS that if they want to retool and let you resize applications and really turn it into a productivity machine like a Mac is, they're going to have to fundamentally rewrite the core of iPad OS. Whereas just slapping Mac OS onto the iPad, it's got the hardware for it and Mac OS is kind of already built for that. I think the only thing you would have to tinker with is essentially allowing Mac OS to support Face ID, which I'm totally fine with. So if they straight up in June announced that, hey, you know what, we're going to let you dual boot your iPad and if you want to add Mac OS to it, you can. You just got to ensure that there's a mouse and keyboard connected and we can only do this with the M1. So it's not going to work with any other iPads in the past, but these new ones with eight gigs of RAM or more and with the silicon inside, then I wouldn't be that upset. In fact, that would make me much more interested in using my iPad as my dedicated editing machine and also knowing that when I want to go back into iPad OS, I can dual boot back into a touch dominant operating system and enjoy all of the iPad apps that are there. It's essentially just allowing the iPad to be more capable. And if Apple does have the energy and the effort to retool iPad OS into doing all of the things that Mac OS can, I hope they can do that. I hope they will do that. I just wonder if the legacy hardware within the iPad lineup and having to optimize the operating system for the A12 chip, the A14 chip, and all these other older iPads might slow them down and prevent them from turning the iPad into something that can replace your Mac, which is why ultimately I wouldn't mind it if Apple just said, you know what, that's going to take too much work. Let's just let people put Mac OS on the iPad if you want to. I'm not saying force it on everyone. I'm not suggesting that you have to use Mac OS when you buy the new iPad Pro. It's just an optional thing. You know, if you want to keep it on iPad OS and leave it on iPad OS mode, you can. I'm just exploring the options out there. Similar to how Apple allowed, you know, Boot Camp and Windows on the Mac. That almost sounds more crazy than Apple just allowing you to run two different operating systems on one Apple device because, you know, Apple runs and owns both and they're proud of both of those operating systems. So if they could get you to buy a $1,500 iPad and keyboard combo and now let you run two of the most capable operating systems in the ecosystem, yeah, that would make the product pretty dang tempting, especially for me. But for the record, I don't think that's what Apple will do. I'm pretty sure iPadOS is going to have some new nifty features, but ultimately it's still not going to be a complete Mac replacement for a ton of people out there. So feel free to let me know what you think is going to happen. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.